Hello students. Lesson 15. Our India Physical Diversity. In this video, we will be starting the lesson Our India Physical Diversity. India is our country. It has a variety of physical features such as the Himalayan mountain ranges, very high peaks, plateaus, vast plains, river systems, deserts, and coastal plains and islands. Together, together they make India our country, which is unique in its natural setting. Besides, India is the home for a variety of plants and animals. So, we are starting a new lesson in this video and after studying this lesson, you will be able to understand the physical map of India know about the Himalayan mountains, plateaus, plains, coastal plains, river basins and desert. So we will go through these different physical areas one by one and understand what, what each of them mean. Understand how the factors of natural environment influence the life of people. Know the effects of physical factors on art and architecture know about the important characteristics of weather and the climate of India. So we will learn the difference between what weather means and what climate means and we will know about the important characteristics of the weather and climate of different parts of India and know about the plants and animals of India. Physical divisions of India. Look at a map given in the next page. It shows the major physical divisions of India. With the help of this map, you will be able to easily identify the varied physical features of India. Okay, so now we have been given a map here and we can identify the different features of our country. Okay, so here we have the legend. Whenever there is a map given, we need a legend which is going to tell us what each of the parts of the map means. Okay, so the legend is here. Now, let us go through these one by one and learn more about the different physical features of India. What do you see in the map? When you look at the land surface of India, don't you notice the differences from one region to another? You see various types of landforms such as mountains, hills, plains, plateaus, valleys and gorges etc. These differences that we see on the land surface are known as physical features. Okay, so let us come from the top. Here we have as seen in brown color the mountain regions of India also known as the northern mountains okay next here as seen in the green color we have all this which is the plains okay so we have next the northern plains next we have this uh, triangular shape over here okay so you can see that it forms a triangle shape like this and like this okay so this is called as the peninsular plateau is also called as the deccan plateau okay next we have over here so this region and this region they are called as the eastern and western ghats finally along the coast of our india we have the coastal plain. So here we see it starts here. The entire of Gujarat is classified as a coastal plain and then it moves across the coast and it comes right next to the eastern and western Ghats. So these are the different physical features of our country. We can also look at these features in the geo map that we have been provided by Google. Okay. So here we have the country 
and if we go to the satellite mode we will be able to look at all these in detail okay so as you can see over here like we just talked about this is Gujarat and we have the coastal plains over here and then we have the western and eastern guard so let us try to zoom it in and see so as you zoom in you will be able to see more and more places and you'll also be able to see the different physical characteristics now let us try to go and search for the himalayan mountain range so here you can see these white areas so these mark the mountain ranges Okay, so if you choose a geo map such as the Google map, you will be able to see the different physical features in detail. Okay, let us go back to our lesson. Now, let us study about the major physical divisions of India. We will start with the northern mountains. They consist mostly of the Himalayan range. So, we already looked in the Google map that the northern part of India consists of the Himalayan range and these are called as the northern mountains. When you look at the northern part of the map, you will notice that the Himalayan range extends from Kashmir to Meghalaya. So we have Kashmir over here and we have Meghalaya over here. Okay, so the Himalayan ranges, it extends from Kashmir to Meghalaya and the himalayas are the highest mountains in the world okay so the himalaya are the highest mountains in the world now let us look into the characteristics of the himalayan mountains the characteristics are they are covered in snow hence they are called as the himalayas so the himalayas word comes from the sun word Hima, which means snow. Okay, so Himalaya means snow covered mountains. They have many high peaks. So, as we can see here in the map, we have two peaks that have been illustrated for us. One is the Mount Everest. This is the highest peak in the world. Okay, but this is not in India, this is in Nepal. The highest peak in India is Kanchanajunga, which is situated over here. We can also see some other peaks that are also given like the Himadri peak and the other peaks that are shown here. You can look to them in detail. Another characteristic of Himalayas is that many deep valleys and gorges are also seen there. So I will just show you what a gorge looks like. So you can see here there are two big mountains. And there is a narrow valley in between and you can see there is a flowing water body here okay so this is what a gorge looks like so here we have a narrow uh, valley in between two big mountains and a water body that is flowing in between them so one of the characteristics of Himalayas is that there are many gorges present then there are glaciers and the highest mountain passes so what do glaciers mean i'll just show you another picture so glaciers are huge bodies of water frozen and moving slowly over land okay so as you can see here glacier is nothing but a big body of ice that is moving slowly then what do you mean by mountain passes? So mountain passes are roads that are constructed on top of mountains. Okay. So Himalayas have a number of glaciers and mountain passes. So hot springs are naturally hot bodies of water that spray from the underground. Okay. And the Himalayas also have a variety of plant and animal species. So these are the different characteristic of the Himalayan ranges. Let us go through them one by one once again. So we can start from here. There are many high peaks. There are many deep valleys and gorges. There are glaciers and highest mountain passes. There are hot springs and 
there is a variety of plant and animal species. Okay, so these are the characteristics of the Himalayan ranges. Now, let us look into the advantages of the Himalayan ranges. So, the first advantage is that the Himalayas, they prevent the cold winds from Central Asia blowing into India. So, let us go back to our map. Here, we have India and if we look at the bigger picture, here we have the Central Asia. So, as you can see here, this is China and Tibet. Okay. So, when there is any cold wind that is blowing in from Central Asia in this way, the Himalayan ranges, they act as a natural barrier and they prevent the cold winds that are blowing into India. Okay. So, this helps to prevent the extremely cold weathers in the Indian region. Okay. So, the Himalayas, it helps to prevent the cold winds that are coming from Central Asia. Next, they are the sources of many North Indian rivers. Okay. So, as we know, there is snow on the mountains and once the snow melts, it gives rise to a number of rivers. So, here we have the Yamuna River. Here we have the Ganga River or the Ganges River. Here we have the Brahmaputra River. All these rivers, they take birth in the Himalayas. Okay. So, the Himalayas are also sources of many North Indian rivers. They check the monsoon winds and cause heavy rainfalls. Okay. So, they also cause heavy rainfalls by checking the monsoon winds. They are like a gigantic wall and are natural northern frontiers to control foreign invasions. Because the weather conditions are so extreme, it is not very easy to get access into India. Because we have a big barrier here. So we can assume that Himalayas are acting as a big barrier in this region. Therefore, if anybody is trying to enter our country, they act as a natural barrier. Okay. So, these are the advantages of Himalayas. If you want to know more about Himalayas, you can refer to this section. Next, we will be answering the following questions. Find out the names of animals which live in the foothills of Himalayas and make a list of these animals. Okay, so you need to make a list of the animals that are living in the foothills of Himalayas. I will show you some images and tell you about some animals that live in the foothills of Himalayas. We will start, start with the wild yak of the Himalayas. So the Himalayan wild yak as you can see here is a yak that has been domesticated by the people who are living in the foothills. These animals are reared for their meat, milk and other products. Okay, so this is one animal that lives in the foothills of Himalayas. Next, we can also find the snow leopards in the foothills. So, the snow leopards are just like leopards but they have lighter fur and they prefer colder regions. Okay, which is why they are found in the foothills of Himalayas. Next, we, we can also find the wild thar or the wild goat. So, this animal is not domesticated. And it has adapted extremely well to the hilly and rugged terrain of the foothills. So, it has a lot of balance as you can see here. And it can manage to navigate through the rugged terrains of the foothills. Next, this is the musk deer. So, the musk deer are a species that have been targeted by human beings for perfume manufacturing. So, the male musk deer have a musk gland which is used for manufacturing of perfumes. So, this is another animal that is found in the Himalayas. Next, we have the Indian black bear. So, the Indian black bear is also an animal that can be found in the foothills of Himalayas. So, I have given you the list of the different animals. You can refer to it here. You can also think of other animals and add on to this list. Next, 
An unusually wide and long valley in the lower Himalayas is called a dune. For example, Dehradun. It is a popular tourist spot. During summer, people visit this place. Why do they visit it? So, this is because during summer, the temperatures would be very hot. However, in long valleys that are close to the lower Himalayas, the temperature will lower as the night falls. Okay, And the relatively cooler temperature provides shelter from the extreme heat. This is why it is a very popular place during summer. Next, if there are mountains or mountain ranges or ghats near or surrounding your place, write their names. So, I have given an example of the Western Ghats. We will be learning more in detail about the Western Ghats in the next sections. So, the Western Ghats are also known as the Sahyadris or the Nilgiris. Okay, so we will learn more about these in detail. So, where exactly are the Western Ghats is? If you look at this map of India, you can see that there are the Eastern and Western Ghats which are located in right near the coastal plains. Okay, so here it is shown in pink. So, the Western Ghats are very close by and it passes through Karnataka, which is why I gave that example. And for the last question, they have asked you to collect a picture of one animal living in the foothills of Himalayas. Okay, so I will leave this activity to you. So, this is the end of this module of the lesson, Our India Physical Diversity. In the next module, we will be starting the Northern Plains. I will see you all in the next video.